All right, guys, we'll get started here in just a second. Good morning, everyone. Great to see so many of you here today uh, for our strength and conditioning session. We just finished up with the 12s and 14s. Went really well, but it is a bit of a mad rush because uh, for those that have been a part of my strength and conditioning programs before, you'll know that, um, you know, I, I like to be fairly interactive. I like to chat and then give feedback, but today's session uh, will be pretty different because we are recording it to be used as a resource um, for you guys to be able to refer back to. So I won't be chatting as much with you guys as I will be just kind of rolling through the exercises. So um, really important that you stay locked in. Um, you've got your equipment nearby, you've got your drink nearby. Um, and, and again, you can always refer back to this. If I move too quickly through the exercises, we'll have a chance to come back to it. But So we're just doing, uh, what, we, what we're focusing on today is strength and conditioning. We're not doing skills work today. It is purely uh, strength-based. Um, so we've got three programs to get through. Okay, we're not gonna do all, we're not gonna do every exercise all the way through, okay? Full sets and reps. We're gonna do one set of every exercise, but because it is three programs, we've got a bulletproof strength program. It's a bulletproof, bulletproof strength program, an explosive program, it's called Explode. Okay, so that's really, uh, plyometric sprint technique, um, really game specific stuff. And then we've got a reload session. So our re reload session is our mobility and our core. All right. So again, strength, one session, which we'll start with, um, explode, which is, which is our, our plyos and our sprint technique and landing. And then we've got reload, which is our mobility and core. So you will need uh, a little bit of, you'll need a bit of space. You'll need some equipment, which I'll go through quickly now. If you don't have the equipment today, don't stress, okay? Because again, this is like a tutorial video. It's not an interactive video as such. We are just sort of going through the exercises so that you guys, so that we've got a recording of it as well. But if we have time at the end, um, we will open up for, for questions so that you guys uh, can ask any questions if you have them, but you guys know you can get in touch with me throughout the week as well. If you're attempting the program and you're not sure if one of the exercises, you know, I'm. Uh, I'm just an email or a text or a call away. Just, just ask me questions. So a couple of things you will need. Okay. This is the older age group, obviously. So we start to add a little bit of external load to our exercises. Most of the load we add is through resistance bands. All right. So you will need a, a mini band. Okay. You need a mini band, a mini resistance band. Again, if you don't have it today, don't stress. You'll need a foam roller. Okay. You'll need some form of a, a foam roller or a self myofascial release device. So I've got a little massage ball here. It can be really good for glutes. This one, obviously for our bigger, longer muscles like quads, hammies, calves. We're going to get stuck into that pretty shortly. So grab your foam roller. Um, again, as I said, we're 16s and 18s. So if you guys do need some external load, um, I, I would, I would uh, highly recommend a, a kettlebell just because it's got so many uses. Um, just a light one, like a six or eight kilo, uh, or if you've got a set of dumbbells, if mum and dad have got a home gym set up or something, you know, probably a six or seven kilo dumbbell or, or a set of dumbbells to not necessarily in the first, you know, week of the program, but as we get to week three and four and we're really building towards being back on court, add a little bit of external load. Another good one is a long resistance band. Okay, another good one to have is a longer resistance band, like a longer, thinner resistance band. All right, we're gonna get, a, we're gonna get started. Um, Again, if everyone can just keep their microphones off because this session, as much as I'd love to chat to you guys, we are recording it as a resource. So I'm just going to kind of roll through um, and I'm not going to give individual feedback to each person, but I'm happy to help um, over the coming weeks if anyone needs any help. So we're going to do our warm up, our dynamic warm up, and our foam rolling. Um, so we'll start with our foam rolling. We're only going to do this once today because we're rolling through all three of our sessions. We're going to do our Foam rolling first. So again, I like to start with our glutes. If I'm doing my right glute, again, you guys by now, 16s, 18s, you should be fairly, um, you know, fairly on top of your foam rolling, I would think by now, but I like to stack my right leg uh, on my left knee, my right ankle, my left knee, just get a little bit more load through that hip and through that foam roller. Okay, five rolls on either, on either body part is usually enough. So you swap to my left leg. Again, I'm not going to spend too much time on this because you guys should, should be pretty well uh, on top of your foam rolling, but there's a lot of resources. We've uploaded a lot of resources during lockdown that have tutorials on foam rolling. 
um, our warm-up protocol that we've adopted from Core 24, uh, from Core Advantage, also has a, um, a really, really good tutorial on foam rolling. Next one we like to do is our ITB. So we're going down the side of our upper thigh here. So working on that tendon there that often gets quite tight in court sport athletes. I like to stack my feet on top of each other so I get the full weight through my ITB. But if that's too much, a bit too tender, just roll that left leg over. Okay, and just take some of that weight off having that left foot down. And again, you wanna roll all the way from your hip down to the side of your knee. Breathing is really important through this as well. So a lot of people don't focus on their breathing. Guys that know me and have done sessions with me before, you'll know that I'm a big one for breathing. It's really important as we're executing any of our movements. It sounds silly because you think, well, of course I'm breathing, Jared, because I'm alive, but it's actually the timing of our breaths. Okay, so a breath out relaxes our muscles. A breath in generally tenses our muscles a little bit. So we need to really nice, slow, controlled breaths as we're trying to relieve tension in muscles here. Get that. Release. I'm going to go straight to my calves. All right. But you guys could do hammies, quads, um, even lats if you wanted to for some upper body release. If you've got tight shoulders or a tight chest, but I'm going to go straight to my calves. And again, I like to stack my feet here. If that's too if that's too tender, or you've got a really hard foam roller, you could go both feet at the same time, like so. Double your money. But I like to stack my feet to get a little bit more into that calf. All right. That's our foam rolling. So every session, we've got our three sessions, always starts with a foam roll, okay? And really any of our sessions, we come into the stadium. Hopefully when we get back in soon, we'll see you all come in with your foam roller strapped to your bag or something. We get down, we do a foam roll. Um, but that's a really important part of our uh, physical preparation, but also our, our recovery. Uh, our dynamic warm up, it's about five minutes. Uh, there's a lot of dynamic movements, just sort of jumping around and moving. So you will need a little bit of space now. It's all body weight, okay? No bands or anything, it's all body weight just to get the blood flowing before we move into our strength circuit. Um, so the first exercise is a high knee skip. You guys know I love this one. So I start with my right knee up. So I'm driving my right knee up and I've got my left arm up like so. So I've got a nice square here, nice square here. So we work on our technique, even though we're warming up. We work on our sprint technique. So what it looks like here, we're only gonna go for about 20 seconds, is a skip and I'm driving my arms and knees forward and back. Okay, so you guys can follow along with me today as much as you possibly can. Like I said, I'm gonna move through these exercises pretty quickly. You will need a bench today. You will need a couple of benches or a bench, something to get your shoulders sort of raised up off the ground for a couple of the exercises we're doing. Three, two, one. Okay, hold there. The next exercise we're doing is a variation on a jumping jack. Okay, so I love jumping jacks. We've all done them before. But we call this one a seal jack. So we go across our body with our arms just to warm up our upper body a little bit rather than going up overhead, which can be a bit of a weird movement for our shoulders. We go across. Okay, so start arms wide, feet wide, like so. And as we come in, we're just swapping our arms over. So I like to go right arm over, right arm under, right arm over, right arm under. And we're doing this one for about 20 seconds as well. Again, I'm getting that heart rate up a little bit, getting the blood pumping. So this for the first session, be a bit of a stress. Three, two, one, and rest. Bit of a strength focus in this first session, really important that we build that foundation. And then we've got our explosive and our mobility and core to finish. This next exercise is a little bit of a variation on a lateral squat. We're just adding a bit of movement to it. So I'm starting on the left side of my screen here. We're just doing two lateral skips and sitting down into like a lateral lunge or squat, whatever you want to call it there, okay? Pushing off again to the left and sitting into our left knee. Push off to our right, sit into our right knee. Left, little skips. So it's just one skip, two skip, sit. Push off one, skip, two skip, sit. Okay, so we're getting that really, that nice lateral movement we need for basketball. We're exploding out there. 
and sitting into that lunge. Now we're going to vary, vary that up a little bit and we're going to turn that into a forward lunge for a little bit of a hip flexor stretch. So you do five reps of that. Again, all of this will be sent out in a PDF program. This video is just for you guys to refer back to and see the movements in real time. Now I'm going to turn it into a bit of a lunge. So if I sat into my right leg going that way, I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm actually going to turn my hips, turn it into a bit of a stretch. I'll show you what it looks like. So skip, skip, down, and I've turned my hips, and I'm into a, just a really quick stretch. I'm going to push off that right leg, skip, skip. Now I'm left leg down. Push off, skip, skip. Right leg, a little bit of a stretch. Push off right leg, left leg forward this time. So if you time it properly, you should come down into that little hip flexor stretch. Push off. Once you go once onto the left and once right, that would be one rep. We go through about five reps of these, all right? So that's, that's essentially our dynamic warm up done. The next exercise we would go into would be a foam, uh, a skipping. Okay, so another thing I think would be really good for you guys to invest in. Again, you can you can order them online off off Kmart, uh, Kmart's website at the moment. Um, really cheap, two dollars, three dollars skipping rope. Um, is we're going to do five sets of thirty seconds of skipping. Okay, just to get that again, just to get that elasticity and that load back into our Achilles and our calves. Um, if you don't have a skipping rope today, I don't have one. I'm obviously indoors. We would just do some pogo hops. Okay, so what a pogo hop looks like, if I've just got soft knees, but I'm not bending my knees. Just soft knees, so they're not locked in. Soft hips, okay? And we're just going to bound, okay, on, on the balls of our feet. So we're just literally like we're skipping, but without a skipping rope, okay? And we do, do that for 30 seconds. Let's go for 30 seconds just to really warm up the muscles of our ankle and feet because we are going to work them a little bit today. A lot of that detraining that we will have experienced through lockdown will be that stability for our ankles, knees and hips. So you'll notice that all of our movements have a pretty strong focus on that. And I've tried to make it as entertaining as, you got, as I can for you guys. Three, two, one, to still be relevant to basketball movement. So it's not just basic squats, deadlifts. We've got a bit more fun involved today. So grab a quick drink if you need it. And then we're into our first strength exercise. So the first exercise of our, of our bulletproof program. So the idea behind that bulletproof, because we're building bulletproof bodies. All right. Strong, robust athletes. That's what we're trying to build. I'm going to get my chair. Chair here. I'm going to use this. Excuse the cameo from my puppy here. Luna loves to jump into a couple of sessions every now and then. So I'm going to use a chair. You guys could use a couch if you've got, again, like I said, if you've got, if your parents have a home gym, you've got a bench press bench, you could use that. I'm inside, so I've got my chair. This is a rear foot elevated split squat. So on the program, it says R-F-E-S-S. -S. Okay, that's a lot of words, a lot of letters. Rear foot elevated split squat. It's an ISO hold as well. Again, you guys are the older kids. You're a little bit more experienced. If you want to add some load to this movement, feel free. Okay, if you want to add a little bit of load, feel free to add a little bit of load. Okay, that could be holding, that could be holding a kettlebell, could be holding two dumbbells, anything. It doesn't need to be a lot of weight, okay, especially because of the isometric hold for this exercise. It doesn't need to be a lot of weight to make this difficult. Right, so I'm going to start with my left leg forward, my right foot. The top of my right foot is going to be flat on my chair. Okay, so I've got my left leg forward. And I'm just dropping that back knee now down into a lunge position. And we're going to hold here for five seconds. All right, so two, three, four, five, explode up. Okay, that's one rep. We're doing four of those on each leg. Okay, so we come down. One, two, three, four, five, explode up. Two. Let's go for three, one, two, three, four, five, explode up. Down again for our last rep on this leg. One, two, three, four, five, explode up, swap legs. All right, so that ISO hold, again, that time under tension, we're getting that training back into those really important muscles for basketball. This puts us into like a, 
like a low jab step type of position. It's almost like a wall sit, but in a jab step. Okay, so you come down here. Now we're on our right leg. Down for one, two, three, four, five. Explode up. Always explosive on the way up. Down, one, two, three, four, five. That's two. Explode up. Again, I could be holding my dumbbells here. I could be holding my kettlebell. Down, one, two, three, four, five. Explode up. And last one. One, two, three, four, five. Explode up. Okay. So there's our two sets of four of our rear foot elevated split squat. Moving on, because I'm going to move pretty quickly through our exercises. You guys get drinks as you need them. We need our chair now for a hip thrust march. So shoulders on our chair. Shoulders are on our chair. Sorry, I'm just taking some notes of where the times of each exercise are here. So don't mind me. So our shoulders are now, we're using our bench as a bit of a brace. All right, I've got my shoulders. I've got the, the chair or my bench or the couch. You can see I've got an ottoman there behind me. We're gonna use that later. Okay, you could use a couch if you're doing this indoors. I've done it before. We're just gonna make use of what we have around us. Okay, I want my feet to be far enough away so that I can just graze the back of my calf. If I twist, okay, through my torso. From here, we're driving our hips up. Okay, so I'm making a nice straight line from my shoulders all the way to my knees. And I'm gonna start with my left knee up. Okay, so see how I make a nice square at my hips with my left knee. And then I'm driving my left foot down and driving my right knee up. And that's our march, okay? So I've got my glutes are firing down again. That's one, that's one rep, okay? So left and right equals one. There's two reps. Okay, I start my third one on the left again. There's three reps, we're gonna do five, okay? And again, all this information will be in the program that's sent out, so don't stress if you're having a bit of trouble following along. Just try and practice the movement. That's four, let's go for our fifth one. Keeping my shoulders square, keeping my glutes firing. And there's five, okay? That is our hip thrust or hip bridge march. You can do that from the ground as well. You don't necessarily have, the, have to have your couch or a chair. You, you could do that one with your shoulders on the ground like so. Just pushing up into a normal bridge. Again, this time just try and touch your heels, rotating. And you push through your heels, keep your hips up, and you can still march from here. You might just need to use your elbows for a bit of stability, okay? But ideally, we like to get that horizontal in that one. All right, single leg deadlift. You guys know I love a single leg movement. All right, we're starting to build that training, not just back into our muscles and our tendons, but also into our balance. Okay, learning where our body is in space is gonna be really, really important for when we come back into the stadium. So again, if you wanna add some external load through this one, feel free. But I don't reckon you're gonna need it to begin with, but you might do as we move on. We're doing six reps on each leg here. So our single leg deadlift, but we're doing it with a bit of a spin. So single leg deadlift, you guys know, I'll start on my right leg, left knee up. All right, let me just chuck a timestamp down here. So on my right leg, left knee up, and I'm gonna swing through and kick that left leg back. So I'm keeping my back straight. That left leg is really staying active. I'm feeling that stretch through my right leg. But from here, I'm gonna swing my left knee through, okay? So we're gonna do six on each leg. What it looks like at full speed is kick back, working on that balance, swing through, okay? There's two, six on each leg. Try and balance on a single leg the whole time if you can. Swing through, drive that knee. Again, we're getting that sport specific movement back into our body. Oop. My balance is not great. I need to work on these. There's four. We're going to go two more on this leg. So we're driving. Again, you can do this with a basketball in your hand. Okay. You can do it with a gob, like a kettlebell. You can do it if you need a little bit of extra help with your balance. Do it next to a chair or a wall. Okay. So we're going to go left leg now. So right knees up. If I'm holding on, just holding on to my chair for a bit of balance. Really making sure our back stays straight. 
that leg that's in the air is nice and active and straight pointing that toe and drive that knee through and up like we're going, like we're going up for a dunk. Six on each leg. So there's two, three driving that knee. We're going to build on this. We're going to build it into a plyometric exercise in the next, if we've got another phase of strength and conditioning. Four. Two more. Back straight. Five. Six. Good job. So that is our single leg deadlift for the knee drive. Moving on pretty quickly. We've got an oscillating squat. So you guys know I love squats. So we're getting into a finally getting into a double leg exercise. So we know what a squat looks like. We're sitting down to our imaginary chair. Okay, so our back stays straight, our chest stays up. Okay, it's as much hip hinge as it is knees. Whereas our single leg deadlift and our deadlift is more hips and knees stay pretty well straight. So with our squat, the difference with this one is we're doing what's called an oscillating squat. So you're actually gonna squat down, you're gonna come down and you're only gonna come up to here. So you're gonna basically bounce in that last, that sort of bottom two thirds of the squat. Okay, so we're building that elasticity back up in our muscles. You're going to do 10 oscillating squats. So full speed, what that would look like is we come down to as deep as we can. I, I don't have great hips, so this is as deep as I can go, I swear. And then we're oscillating, so we're bouncing. Again, we're building that elasticity back in those tendons. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. All right, so we get comfortable down in that low position again, bouncing in that position there, all right? Next exercise, we're moving through these pretty quickly, guys. Yoga push-up. So a yoga push-up. What that looks like, yoga push-up, what that looks like is like a normal push-up and you can do these on your knees, okay? If you're not really confident with push-ups, that's okay. You can do these on your knees or you can do them on your toes. I'll start on my knees, okay? So with our knee push-ups, we've got our hips locked in, okay? We don't do them on all fours like this. We've got our hips locked in, all right? What we do from here is a yoga push-up. So it's a little bit of shoulders and core as well. And again, for those that haven't done push-ups with me before, we've got a few new people today. Really important that your fingers are pointing in the same direction as your head. Okay, so fingers are pointing up. If your fingers are pointing at each other, your elbows are gonna flare out, okay? Fingers pointing up, elbows stay tucked in by our side. They don't have to touch, like, I don't need them to be right on your body. But they need to be pretty tight, okay? I don't want to see elbows out like this, like a jump shot. We don't want to see anyone really shooting like that. We want to see elbows, you know, fairly vertical. So on our knees here, we go hips locked in, okay? We go down into a push-up, bring our chest down. From here, though, the difference is we push back into a child's pose, all right? If we're doing them on our knees, then we roll our weight forward, roll our chest close to the ground, into an up dog, okay? So you can have your hips down here. Uh, sorry, you can have your thighs down here. And then we can bring our hips up and we go into a push up again. And we push back. So we get a little bit of a back stretch, but that pushing back movement here, that there, turns what would usually just be a chest exercise into a bit of a shoulder exercise. So I'll do a couple at full pace, okay? So push up, push back, roll through into up dog, bring my hips up, down into a push-up. If I'm doing them on my toes, okay, normal push-up, now I'm pushing back the down dog. So I've got my toes curled under, then I'm rolling through, hips, uh, thighs down into an up dog, bring my legs off the ground again, tuck my toes, push up, push back into down dog. Okay, there's a bit to remember there, so you may need to re-watch that exercise as we go through. You can refer back to it, but we're going to move on. We're going to do five of those. We'll be a full set. All right, the next exercise we've got is called face pull. So what that looks like, a face pull is with our resistance band. Okay, if you don't have a long resistance band today, that's okay. I actually don't have one inside either. But what it looks like is... If I had my long resistance band here, okay, and I make it as if I've tied that, I've tied that resistance band around a pole here, like so. Okay, the face pull, how that looks 
is we're pulling the band apart as we pull it back to our face. Okay, so I'll get a little bit lower here. So we've got that resistance band, we're pulling it apart as we pull the band back to our face. All right, so you can imagine if this was a resistance band, I wouldn't need to move my body. I'd be pulling apart and essentially pulling my hands or bringing the band to my head. So I'd be bringing the band to my head, bringing the band to my forehead. Here, what I'm actually using as the weight or as the resistance is my own body. Okay, so I'm bringing my hands back level with my head and I'm working those muscles of my upper back and my shoulders. All right, so again, if you've got a band, you can tie the long resistance band around a pole like that and you're just pulling the band to your head, almost like you're trying to crush a can between your shoulder blades there. That's our face pull exercise. We'll be doing eight reps of that. Eight reps of our face pull exercise. All right. As I said, make sure you're getting drinks throughout this because I'm not going to really stop. Next exercise we've got is a calf raise with a knee drive. Calf raise with a knee drive. So you can use a doorway for this. I'm, today I'm going to use a chair. All right. We've worked a lot on our calf raises. We know we need to build, um, we need to build some load back into our calves. You could use a doorway. Okay, so just your bedroom door would be perfect because you can have hands on either side. I'm going to use the back of a chair today. You can use the back of a couch. You can even use the wall if you wanted to. Okay, I'm not going to use the wall because I don't want to face away from the camera. So I'm going to use the chair here. It's a little bit low, but it'll do the trick. All right, what we're doing is essentially is a calf raise that you can see it's very functional, much like a layup or taking off into a sprint. So again, I'm going to go left leg first. Okay, so I'm going to step back with my right leg into a bit of a lunge, and then I'm going to I'm going to drive forward and come into that left calf raise. You can see here I'm having some trouble because my knee comes into the chair. Okay, if you had a doorway, you step back into that lunge and then you swing your arms and your knees all the way through. Okay, and you get into a nice forward kind of motion position. It's really, really functional. Great for, you know, that movement exploding up to the ring. We're going to do 10 on each side. So if I step back on my right leg, I drive up onto the ball on my left foot here. I'm going to give myself a little bit more space, a little bit more lean here. And we're doing 10 on each leg. Okay, so there's two, I get that knee drive, I step back, and there's three. Okay, 10 on each leg. I'm just gonna do five on each leg here. There's four, there's five. Swapping legs, so now I'm, I'm on my right foot, it's my calf raised foot. So I'm stepping back with my left leg, get a nice long lunge, like I'm pushing off and driving up onto that right leg. Nice and long push off, and I'm driving my body weight forward and up. Again, if you've got that doorway, or if you're lucky enough to have a squat rack, squat rack's perfect for this. Okay, you have your hands out wide. Ten on each leg is what we're doing. Moving on, we've got our reverse plank. So this one's going to be a little difficult for today. I can I, I can see a couple of you are outside which is okay. If you can't do every exercise today, today's session, the point is not for you to be able to do the whole session because we're doing three sessions. Okay. This is a reverse plank. So literally you guys know what a plank is, like a prone hold. We're really just flipping that on its head. So that really works the muscles of our anterior core, so the front of our body, abs, hip flexors, uh, you know, those muscles. This is going to work the back. So hamstrings, glutes, uh, lower back. What you'll need is you'll need two raised surfaces. So that's why I've got my ottoman here. You could use a couch and an ottoman. You could use two chairs. You could use uh, a weight bench. Like you could use uh, a weight bench and, uh, and, and a, you know, whatever, two weight benches or a weight bench and a chair. I'm going to get my shoulders, my shoulder blades on the chair, okay, sitting under here. Okay, and I'm gonna bring, oh, I got my chair a little bit too far away, overestimated how tall I am. Uh, and I'm gonna bring my heels up onto my ottoman here. Okay, and we wanna stay locked in. So we're locking our glutes in here. 
keeping our hips as high as we can. We want a nice straight line from shoulders all the way down to heels, keeping our heels driving into that ottoman. All right, so we're literally as if we're lying in bed, but we've got nothing supporting our lower back, glutes and hammies. So we're having to really keep that tension on those muscles there. We're gonna hold that for 30 seconds. Okay, so now that this amount of time that I've probably been talking, we're probably at about 20 seconds. You would hold this for 30. Okay, you could drop down, bring your feet off, have a rest, and go again. That's our reverse plank. All right. Grab a drink, guys. That's the end of our foundational strength. That's the end of our bulletproof program. The next program we're going to do is explode. So that's our, like our plyos. Um, and again, you need a little bit of space. We're not going to be able to do every exercise today, but we'll do the best we can. Okay. May not be able to do every single exercise um, as, as best as we could, but we're going to demonstrate the start of each exercise. Okay. Grab a quick drink, our explosive program. So again, you would do a foam roll, all right, before starting this program. So a week for you guys this week might look like you know, uh, girls, you've got your Zooms on Tuesday. Boys, you've got your workout sheets to do. So you might do your workout, your skills workout tomorrow. Um, and then you might do the foundational strength session on Wednesday, the explosive session on Friday, and the reload mobility and core session on a Saturday or Sunday. Okay, that's how, that might, that's how your week might look, those three separate sessions. Um, I would never do, never do the foundational strength session and the explode session on back-to-back -back days. So if you want to do more than one of each program a week, you can squeeze it in. Um, so you might do this foundational strength today, like on Sunday, uh, explode on a Tuesday, mobility on a Wednesday, and then you could go strength again on the, on the Thursday or Friday and explode again on the, on the Friday or Saturday. So you could fit two in, but you don't need to. One, once a week of each of these programs will be fine. All right, so... We go through our foam roll, our dynamic warm up, and our skipping again before starting our explosive program. For those of you that are outside, just find a crack in the concrete or a line. I, I use my, again, my trusty strap here as my line. Okay, so I've got my makeshift line here on the carpet. And we're doing some acceleration, deceleration work. All right, so we're all warmed up, we've done our you know, we've done our seal jacks, we've done our foam rolling, we've done our high knee skips. This is now acceleration, deceleration. So we've got to build that load back into our, into our body. I'm going to start on the right here. I'm going to walk through it really quickly. So if I'm going from right to left, I'm going to step left first. So left foot over the line, right foot over the line, left foot back, right foot back. Then I'm going to push off, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. It's like a funny little dance. Okay, but you're going to do that at full speed. Okay, it's not a line hop. Okay, so it's not da, 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 it's not up and down. Okay, it's not up and down. We're not we're not just trying to, you know, it's not a it's it's footwork, but the idea is that we're actually trying to accelerate forward. Okay, so what it looks like at full speed, I'll go once to my left and once back to my right. So we need to get about five reps in. Okay, so it's five reps. So if that is one rep, we need to get five of those. So we need about a metre, metre and a half space to get these all in. The idea is that it's like a sprint takeoff and a deceleration backwards. So what it looks like full speed is, so I'm actually driving my arms there. Okay, so I'm actually pumping my arms. Okay, it's not just line hops, okay, or alternating. That's all great. And that's really good to warm up our calves and ankles a little bit of a, a you know, footwork drill, but we're actually trying to take off and really you know, quickly slow down. So now I'm, now I'm going from left to right, so I'm leading with my right leg here. So I'm You can actually see I'm driving that foot into the ground. So it's like I've taken off, almost like I've, I'm going by my defender, yeah? So I've, I take off, but I'm really quickly pushing back, all right? Five reps of that. That's our line, accelerate, decelerate. The next exercise we've got, you'll need space, which we don't have a lot of. I don't have a lot of here in my lounge room. We're going to get to a max, a max sprint. 
So we will get to a max sprint. We're trying to build back up that, uh, that full speed sprint, get some of that back into our bodies. But how we get into it, how we actually get into the sprint, you're not just going to rock up in your backyard and be sprinting up and down or, you know, if you've got an outdoor court or a basketball court nearby. But ideally, you would go to a basketball court to do this session. You, you could because you could get some shots up in between. But how we get into this exercise is the key to it. And that's what I'm going to show you now. So it's actually like a forward lean into a sprint. So what it looks like is I'm going to lean as far forward as I can without my heels coming off the ground. So like so. So my toes are really digging into the ground. I'm going to lean as far forward as I can. And just before I'm about to fall, I take off. Okay. All right. So it's a bit of a, it's a, bit of a sprint um, or running mechanics drill. Some of you might have done it before. If you've got a sprint coach or if you've done little laps, it's a really good drill to get us into that low takeoff position. Gets us low because you've got to brace yourself and catch your body before you even take off into a full sprint. So again, I've only got <laughs> three or four meters here, but what it would look like, and again, we're doing, we're doing, uh, what do we got? We'll do three. So we're going to do three on either side. So we've got three reps of this. So right and left is one rep. So we're going to fall, 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 forward. Okay. And then you'd come back, use your break. You could sprint all the way out to half court if you've got a, you know, if you're at a school or if you've got a big space. You can go full court if you want, get the full speed. That was right leg forward. Now I'm going to lean forward, falling. And that left leg take off. All right. So you would do that's one that's one rep, left and right. You'll do three of those. All right, wherever you've got space. That's our lean into our max sprint. Forward lean into our max sprint. <clears throat> okay, next exercise. I know I'm moving quickly, guys. I apologize, but we've got a lot to get through today. And it's important that we get all of this on record so that you guys can refer back to it. We can go a little bit over time because we don't have a session afterwards, whereas with the 12s and 14s, I had to get into this session with you guys. So we were a bit rushed. This one's, there's a fair bit of detail to this. So uh, there's quite a few of you that would have done the strength and conditioning with me, you know, through, through the first and second lockdowns. Um, you know, I love single leg landings. You know, I love sticking and landing on single legs, whether that's jumping up and landing on a single leg or exploding across. I really like exploding across and landing on a single leg because that, that ability to land on a single leg, um, you know, especially when you're not expecting to, if you're able to do that really competently, um, we, we're going we're gonna to go a pretty long way to avoiding a lot of injuries, but it's also really important for performance. So this exercise is called a split stick, um, split stick lateral. So a split stick lateral. It's a bit of a mouthful. I'm going to walk you through it. So we're, the, we finish with our lateral hop. But we start with our feet together or our, our feet about hip distance apart. I'm going to go from right to left first. So I'm going to split my legs. So I'm going to jump almost into like a, like a plyo lunge position with my right leg forward. So I split, I come back and I'm on my, just my right leg with my left leg up and I push from right to left. Okay. So it's actually a really fun movement. It's really game-like because you go into that like almost like you've got the ball and you're about to go low by your defender. We go into that split position here. So split, stick, lateral. Okay, so this is what it looks like at full speed. Okay, so I'll go again. I'll go from the side so you can see the split. So split, single leg, right leg, push off to my left. All right, full speed again from right to left, and then I'll do one from left to right. So split stick. Lateral. Okay, left to right. Now my left leg's gonna go forward. So I go split stick, lateral, and I land on that single leg. I go full pace, split stick, lateral. All right, that's our split stick lateral. You're gonna do five on each leg, okay? Great job, <laughs> moving on. Lots to digest. If you've got questions, we're making pretty good time, so we might have time for questions at the end today. So just chuck them in the chat as we go through, okay? And I'll try and get to the questions at the end if you've got any questions. Otherwise, you guys know I'm always available to chat. Power skips. Power skips is our next exercise. So again, you need a bit of space. You need a bit of space. I don't have it here today, but power skips is our exercise. So 
What that means is we all know, I think we all know how to skip. I mean, we did it as a part of our warm up, like our high knee skips, you know, it's just adding that, boom, boom, boom. it's just adding that extra little movement, that little hop in between our step. So we know how to skip. What we're doing here is power skips. So sounds funny, but you're actually going to try and explode up as high as you can. You'll feel really goofy, but it's such a good movement for the mechanics of your jumping, even your sprinting, keeping on the balls of your feet, making sure our heels don't strike the ground. So what it looks like is I'm just going to do two. So I'm going to do like a left and a right. Okay. You would do two continuous. So you would go left, right, left, right, and then have a break and come back and go again. But what it would look like is left, right. Okay. And now if I turn around and I come back, left, right. Again, so we're just, it's just like a normal skip. Okay. But we are, up as high as we can, really trying to jump up as high as we can. So we get that, we get that absorption and that explode up again and that knee drive. That's our, that's our um, power skip, power skip. Uh, you're only going to do two reps of that. It's a pretty demanding, uh, pretty taxing exercise. So again, you would go left, right, left, right. That's two sets because left and right is one left and right two. Okay, so you would go out, you're bound out. If you were doing this from the baseline at an outdoor court or something, you'd probably get to three point line. Maybe if you get beyond three point line, that's great. But we're trying to go up a little bit higher. Okay, so you could do it. I mean, I just did it here in my lounge room by just exploding up, almost on the spot, turn around and go again. Okay, power skips, it's a good one. All right. We've got three, uh, two more, two more explosive exercises to go. This is a me mechanics primer. So our mechanics of our jumping is so important. Uh, just like sprint technique, okay, if you can't land, doesn't matter how high you can jump, if you can't land properly, <laughs> you've only got so many of those high jumps in the bank, okay, because if you can't land properly, sooner or later, you're going to land incorrectly, and it's not good. So we're working here a little bit on our mechanics of our landing and our takeoff. So this is a, we're doing four reps, okay? So what that looks like, okay? Our mechanics primer, so if I start with my feet facing the camera, hip distance apart, I start with my arms really high, okay? As if I've just jumped up as high as I possibly can, I'm working on my landing here, I'm up on my tippy toes, okay? And I go from here and I swing my arms through and back into a squat landing. So I'm like that as, as explosively as I can. So from side on, what that looks like is I'm here, and I'm down, okay? So we're going to do that, all right? So we start here with our mechanics primer. We start up nice and high. We swing through. We come up again. We swing through into our landing. We come up again. So we do four of these, okay? We do four of these through, okay? And then on the last one, you're going to max jump. Right. So you'll do four primers and then you'll finish with a max jump. Okay, four primers and you'll finish with a max jump. <sighs> okay, last explosive drill before we move into our reload session, which is mobility and core. So this is a called a versatile jumping drill. So what that means is we're working on basically what you call the penultimate step. So if I'm going to take off a two foot jump, Boom, boom. Okay, so I'm going, that would be my footwork there, would be left, right, swing my arms back, see that mechanics primer, and explode up. Okay, what I'm doing there, so that's only the first part of it. So stay with me here. So left, right, explode up. As soon as I land, I'm pushing off my right leg to my left. Okay, so if I do it forward on, straight on with you guys, I'm left, right, explode. Then I'm pushing off my right leg and I'm going right, left, explode. So I'm jumping, so I'm pushing to my left. So we're getting a little bit of a lateral movement before we take off. Then when I land there, I'm pushing off my left leg, left, right, up. Okay, so there's three jumps, three jumps in every rep. So it's pretty demanding here. We're only going to do, we're only doing a set, uh, a full set is only two. Okay, so two full rotations. So what it looks like here 
if I do it at full speed, make sure I don't hit my lamp here. Okay, so if I go left, right, jump, and I push straight off, right, left, jump, left, right, jump. All right, that would be one, one rep. Then I come back for a second rep. So again, I go forward. So we make a little bit of a, like a, a sort of a right angle. So I go left, right, explode, right, left, explode, left, right, explode. And that's, there's my two reps, okay? So again, I'm gonna move on, but you can come back and watch this video at any stage, any stage. So it's a forward step, right, left, side step, left, right, side step. So we sort of step across our body. So once we land off that first jump, we step across our body, right, left, land, step across our body, left, right, okay? Grab a quick drink, we've got about 10, 15 to go. We're into our reload, okay? So a little bit of mobility. So it's, it's actually good for a warm down. Okay, it's good to do it at the end of today's session. Because there's, even though we've only done one set of everything, um, there's quite a few exercises. So again, our reload session, we would uh, start with our foam roll. We might even spend a little bit more time on the foam roll. I've put in the program just foam roll as needed. Okay, so I haven't put in a specific amount of foam rolls or how much time. Every day is different for you guys. You know, some days you're going to be really tight. You might need 10, 15 minutes of foam rolling. Some days you might only need two or three minutes, um, depending on how you're feeling. If you're feeling loose, if you've come off a walk or come from a run, you might be loose, you might be ready to go. We do our dynamic warm-up. That stays the same. Okay? And then we do our skipping. Okay? So you'll notice that skipping is built into this program a lot. I want to get you guys really confident skipping ropes, getting that bounding movement, elasticity back into our ankles and feet. First exercise, we're down to the ground. Okay, we're doing a bit of a hamstring mobility exercise. We're flat on our backs. I'm gonna start with my right leg straight up, okay? I've got my neck off the ground because I'm looking at the screen so I can see myself. You guys will be flat, head back on the ground. I want my left leg to stay straight, okay? I don't want that lifting off the ground. I don't want it bending at the knee or anything. I want to keep that locked in. You will feel a bit of tightness through that hip as you do this exercise. That's natural. That's okay. That's part of the point of it is we're trying to get mobility through both of our hips independently. So I bring my right knee up. I'm going to wrap my fingers behind my right hamstring, not my right knee or my right calf, behind my hamstring, just below my knee hinge there. All right. I've got my, I'm just relaxing my shin. I guess I'm just letting that hang. And I'm, I'm just gently pulling that femur back. So I'm not really pulling it all the way up. I'm just gently pulling it back. So just until I start to feel that stretch in that left hip. From there, I'm straightening that leg out. Ooh. Okay, and then relaxing. So it's a, it's a dynamic kind of a mobility for our hands. Really stretching out that hamstring tendon, putting it at full extension and still stretching it out and bringing it back in. We would do 10 on each leg. I'm just gonna do five on each leg just to keep things moving along. Okay, swap legs. Again, excuse my head being up because I am looking at the camera a little bit. You guys are nice and relaxed like so. Okay, so then we're oh, keeping that, keeping those toes flexed as well. Don't point them, flexed. Strat, keeping that right leg nice and straight and as flat on the ground as possible so we feel that stretch through this right hip as well. Five. Oh, that's called a hamstring floss. Okay, because there's that movement to it. It's almost like you're flossing your teeth or we're flossing our hamstrings there. All right, next one. I used my chair with the 12s and 14s. It was a bit high for me. So I'm gonna use the ottoman here. You could use your couch. Okay, this is often referred to as a couch stretch, but it's a bit of a variation on it. Okay, so this is called a hip flexor with a tilt. So we've, we're, we're really stretching out our, uh, our hip flexor here. All right, we're going to get our foot up on our, on our ottoman or on our couch. So from side on here, I've got my foot flat. Okay, and I'm bringing that knee down to the ground like so. So I'm in that hip flexor stretch here. Okay. Making sure, so if I go side on again for you guys, making sure 
And again, you can, you, can, you can vary this. So if you've got really tight hips, you might need to get your knee further away. Okay, you might need to get your knee all the way out here or get rid of the ottoman altogether and just go with your foot flat on the ground. That's fine as well. All right, if we go here, I've got my right knee down. Okay, a lot of people make the mistake of just pushing into their hip, just putting their hands on their hips and just pushing forward and just thinking, yep, that's stretching my hip flexors. It's probably stretching bone into bone. It's not great. We need to flex our right glute. So that's as far as you need to come. For me, that's far enough. I'm feeling that stretch now because I'm squeezing my right glute. Any further than that, and I'm no longer stretching my hip flexor, I'm, I'm, I'm pushing bone into bone. It's not good. So from here, we get into this position. All right, and this is where we add a little bit of detail. We're going arms up overhead, and we're tilting away from that grounded leg. So we're kicking that hip out. So we're still keeping that hip locked in. But we're almost like we're... We're tilting, and you should feel that stretch right down the side of your body as well. All right, we're going three on each side. So there's three. I've come up, swap legs, come back down. And again, I'm, now I'm squeezing that left glute, arms up overhead, tilt, tilt. There's two, and I'm doing three. Oh, there's our hip flexor with a tilt. Okay, next exercise is a kneeling adductor pulse. Let's get that out of the way. If you guys are outdoors, hopefully you've got a mat or something you can do this on. What this looks like is similar to our warm up movement where we went side to side and we sat into that right hip or left hip, depending on which way we were going. We're gonna have our right knee on the ground and I'm gonna have my left leg out straight to the side. You can have your heel up, okay? We can be on the inside of your foot. I'm gonna rotate around a little bit. Okay, that works for me to rotate that femur and just rotate from heel to inside of my foot. Okay, don't have it too far out. Okay, you just wanna have it nice and straight. If you go too far, you're gonna probably hurt yourself. So just go straight leg, okay. From here, we're gonna sit back into like a, a child's pose. So we're sitting our butt back towards our heel. So what that looks like side on here is we're sitting that but back to our heel, we've got that foot nice and flat on the ground, but back, and then we're gonna come forward almost into like a push up, but we've still got that leg out to the side. Okay, so straight on what it looks like is here. I sit my butt back on my heel. Okay, I'm stretching my arms forward, and then I might walk my hands forward into a bit of a push up, but that leg out to the side there doesn't really move. I might just shift my weight up onto my heel here. So I'm stretching a different part of my adductor and then I come forward, okay? As with everything we do forward and back is one rep, okay? So if I start from here and then I come forward, that's one rep, okay? We swap sides, we've got three on each leg. So if I go out now, I've got my right leg out okay and i'm sitting back and i might come under my heel here and lift my toes up and then i rock forward onto the inside of that right foot and i'm into a little push-up and i should feel that stretch in a different part of this hip and this adductor sitting my hips back and forward and that would be one rep there okay so you'll be doing three on each side. And again, you'll have a couple of sets of that, but that will all be in the program. Let's keep moving on because we're running out of time. Loaded, loaded ankle mobility. This is an awesome one. So again, we start in that, that lunge, okay? This front knee, those have done s &C with me before. We used to do it with the foam roller here as a bit of a guide. That's how this is going to start, but we're building on that. So we're going to rock our weight forward. We want a fair bit of knee over toe here. Really important to get comfortable with that knee over toe movement, all right? Putting it, putting it, not loading it heavily, but getting used to that movement because we get into that position a lot in sport. We want to keep our heel down the whole time. So our heel stays down here, all right? Heel stays down. We should feel that stretch in the back of our calf here and in our Achilles. And from here, we just push up. Excuse my puppy Luna, she's coming to help. All right, so I come back down, I rock forward, I get my weight forward on that knee. All right, I can even push into that knee a little bit just to get a little bit extra stretch in that lower calf. And then I explode up into a bit of a knee drive 
and come back down. So that's a loaded calf mobility. Okay, so loading it there with some weight forward and then exploding out of that position. I'll swap to my left leg here. You'll be doing three on either leg of that. So left leg now, giving knee over toe action. Nice stretch through my Achilles and the bottom of my calf here, my soleus. Explode out, knee drives if you like. Back down, shake it out a little. Lean back forward, get that stretch, keep your heel down and explode out of that position. That's our loaded ankle mobility. All right, next one. Now we're getting into some core. So we're finishing off with some core. We've done some mobility. It's got a little bit more core, but, but every exercise is with mobility as well. So you guys, we talked about a reverse plank before. Now we've got a, a, just a normal prone hold plank, but we're adding movement to it. So it's called a rocking plank. So if you guys come down into the plank position here, all right, so I've got elbows directly under shoulders. I'm in that straight line from my heels to my back of my head. Then from here, I'm using my toes. Uh oh, watch out, here comes Luna. Loves it when I'm on the ground. Okay, so I'm pushing from here. So I'm pushing from here and I'm rocking my body weight forward and my body weight back. Body weight forward over my hands and back. Okay, forward and back. We're not doing too many of these, okay? So don't worry if you can't hold a plank for 30 seconds even, a minute, you don't need to, okay? We're just doing probably about five reps of these in the first week. So forward and back would be one rep. And we go again, we're gonna do five reps and we're gonna build on that as the weeks go on. We're gonna superset that. So what that means when I say superset, and you'll see it in the program, it's the rocking plank is listed as 3A, okay? And then this next exercise is listed as 3B, okay? This is a single leg. So like our single leg deadlift, okay? It's a single leg uh, with a turn. So we're gonna turn our body. So we're really working on that stability on a single leg. So I'm gonna start facing the camera first, okay? So we go, into our single leg movement. So we're back into our single leg deadlift. I've got my hands together here like I'm praying at my chest. All right, and all I'm doing from here is I'm just turning my torso slightly to the side. Okay, and then slightly to the other side and back. That's one rep. You're gonna do five on each leg. So we've got turn, Turn, if that's too difficult, that's fairly challenging, turning your torso from that loaded position. You can just go with a reach, okay? So again, I come to my single leg deadlift, but this leg's nice and straight, okay? And I might just open my arm up like that, okay? And then I open up the other way. That's one rep, okay? You're doing five on either side. Ooh. <laughs> Got the wobbles myself. So try and focus on a point on the ground. There's two. There's three, and you would do five on either leg, okay? So if I go to my left leg, I'm kicking my right leg back, pointing my chest at the ground, and I'm turning right arm, left arm. So we're getting a good rotation through our spine here at the same time as we're having to stabilize our hips. So those two exercises, you would do back to back. So you do your planks, then you would do your uh, single leg deadlift with a turn, single leg turn, then you would rest. All right. I know we're, uh, we're just on 11 now, so I apologize. We're probably gonna go about five minutes over. Uh, hopefully you guys can stick around. If you can't, we are recording this session, so it will be uploaded when we send out our programs and it'll be time stamped so that you can refer back to each exercise. So if you need to go now, we are at 11 o'clock, I apologize, but we have, four more exercises to go, so two more sets. So this one is a bit of hip mobility, but also a little bit of core. It's called uh, a butterfly lift off. You could use shoes, okay? You could use a couple of shoes. Um, you could even use a couple of uh, training cones if you liked. So we get down into a, like a, just a standard uh, sit here, like a groin sort of a sit, okay? like so, or like we're trying to stretch our groin, and you want to put your shoes or your cone or your drink bottle, whatever you're using, you want to put it about in line with your big toe, okay? So if I get my big toe, 
and in line with my sort of with my knee here. All right. And what we're doing from here, okay, is you're going to let go of your hands and you're just going to try and sit up. Okay, so we're not hands aren't back. If you have to have your hands back, you can, but I like to try and sit up because we're really strengthening our core and our lower back here. And we're going for five reps of lifting our foot and reaching it out past that cone and straightening it out, bringing it back in. And then we go left. Okay, so there's one, one rep. We go right leg back in. So there's a little bit of hip mobility. You'll feel that hip moving around a little bit, but it's also a lot of stability as well because we're keeping our core stable by having to sit up straight, try and keep our back straight. And we're having to take our legs away from our body. So it's a bit of a funny movement, but trust me, give it a crack. And it's pretty hard work. Try to stabilize your hips and stay and keep your chest upright. And as I start to fatigue, I start to fall further and further back. So you can have your hands back behind you if you like to begin with. Really get into that groin stretch as well. And that's still working my hip for a full range of motion, okay? Because I'm lifting my knee up and I'm going out and over my shoe or out and over the cone. And you're going to do five reps is one set of that. That is going to be supersetted, okay? So boom, boom. So this is 4A and 4B. We go straight in to uh, our reach through turn. So that is, we're in a push up position. All right, and again, a little bit of core, a little bit, bit of mobility because we hang out in a bit of a plank here. You're going to do five reps of these. So we come into our plank, but we're on our hands this time. So on our side, we're in our plank. Okay, nice and square from shoulders all the way down to heels. No bums up, no hips down. All right, you're going to reach your right leg through as high as you possibly can. Try and get that out as far as you can and twist and reach your left arm up. All right, so that's to the right. Okay, if I face the camera now, then we're gonna to go to our left. So again, push up, plank position, left leg through, reach my right arm and look. That would be one rep. Come back, right leg through, left arm up, and back, left leg through, right arm twist and up. Okay, all the while we're staying in that sort of plank position. All right, so left and then right is one rep. We're doing five of those. Okay, last superset of the day, and then you guys are free to go and enjoy the rest of your Sunday. We're doing two exercises. For the second exercise, you'll need your mini band. So the second exercise, you'll need your mini band. First exercise, you can do... Um, You'll need a basket. You may need your basketball. Okay, I'm going to use I'm going to use a basketball today. If you really want to challenge, you could use a medicine ball. Okay, I'm, I'm actually going to use a netball. Just excuse me, it's all I've got inside. It's my girlfriend's netball. Okay, but it works the same. So what we want to do is this is called a dead bug rocker series. So if I'm down on the ground, okay, we know that a dead bug is need is up over our hips, or if you know, this is what it is. You've probably done it before. You may not have heard it called a dead bug. Okay, so knees over hips, shins nice and straight, arms straight up overhead like so, because I look like a dead bug. Okay, and we would usually go left leg, right arm, don't touch, come back, right leg, left arm, come back, all while trying to keep our pelvis and our lower back on the ground. We're going to do a variation of that, okay, because you guys need a bit of a challenge, something a bit different. We get our basketball, pretend this isn't a netball, sorry, okay, and we, we jam that basketball here with our elbow and our right leg, okay, so we, we put some pressure there that activates this side of our core the whole time, and then we are still going, but we're just going with our left leg and our left arm, left leg, left arm, okay, and you're going to do five of those, okay, so you go five, three, four, and five, okay? So you do five, and then you would swap, you put the ball here in my left elbow and left knee, and you'll go five again on your right. One, two, three, four, and five. And then to finish off, you're gonna put the ball, you're gonna press it with your hands on both knees, and you're gonna rock one, 
It's almost like a sit up, but you're rocking. Two, three, four, and five. And see how when I rock, I don't really lose that shape. So I stay like that. I don't bring my legs down and then sit up. I rock and I keep this shape. Okay. And you'll feel that all the way through your abdominals. It's a really good burn, that one. Get rid of that fake basketball. Okay, last exercise. Mini band around your ankles. So we superset. So we go straight from the dead bug rocker series. Band around your ankle. Z, plural. Ankles. Feet hip distance apart. This is just an ankle mobility, strengthening, foot strengthening exercise. So all we're doing here is we're rolling in to the inside of our foot, to our arches and our big toe, rolling out to the outside of our foot. So literally, the movement you do not want to do in a game, but we're adding resistance to it now. So we're strengthening those muscles of our feet and ankles. You might need to have your feet a little closer together. It's totally up to you. So we roll in to the inside of our feet, out. That's one rep. In, out. All right, that's two reps. All right, and we just keep doing that. And we're gonna build up, we're gonna have to build up a fair bit of, um, you know, not soreness, but we are going to build up a few reps on that. So we're gonna do 20 reps of that. So you literally, you've got the band around your ankles, you're rolling your feet in and rolling out for 20 reps. Uh, the Dead Bug Rocker series, where we're doing five reps, okay, of each exercise, so five right, five left, five rolling and rocking forward. All right, that's one, that's, that's, a, that's a full set, all right. Okay, guys, that's it for me. Okay, I know I moved through things really quickly, but we're gonna edit this a little bit. Um, we have been recording, so we're gonna edit this a little bit, timestamp each of the exercises so that you guys can refer back to them. We'll be sending out the PDF uh, template for your exercises. So you'll get three pages, essentially. You'll get the, the bulletproof, you'll get the explode, and you'll get the reload. Those are our sessions. Minimal equipment, but for this older age group, 16s, 18s, if you want to start to add some dumbbells, kettlebells, resistance bands, you can. Um, you know, but but I would encourage you to not just start with that if you've never used any external resistance before. Start with your body weight, and in week two or three, maybe you can add some some light resistance. So, thank you very much uh, for tuning in today. Those of you that did, I hope you picked up something, um, and if not. You've all got my contact details. Feel free to shoot me an email or give me a call if you've got any questions. Parents, um, same, same parents, if you've got any questions, um, please feel free to contact me. Thank you, guys. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Um, enjoy your sessions throughout the week as well. Those that are doing the girls' skill sessions Tuesday night, the live sessions with the coaches will be great. Boys, you know, you've got your workouts um, that you've got to be doing as well. So thanks, everyone. Great to see so many of you here this morning. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. See you later. Cheers. See everyone.